In this video, we're going to learn about different techniques for solving linear equations. So let's start with some zero-step equations and see what kind of solution sets we might get. Zero-step means it's already solved. Well, what do we mean by the solution set? The solution set is the set of all values which can be used for the variable and which result in a true statement. So for linear equations, the solution set can take on three forms. And we can show that with the following three equations. So consider x equals 3. This equation is solved. The value of x is 3. And it's only true when x equals 3 for one value of x. The solution set is the set which contains the number 3 and nothing else. Our second equation is not true. 2 does not equal 3. If I write 2 equals 3, that's a false statement or what we call a contradiction. It's never true. There's no x here at all. And so it doesn't matter what the x value is or any other variable, 2 will never equal 3. And so in this case, we say that the solution set is empty. And we show the empty set by either having a pair of braces with nothing inside, or we have this circle with a line through it, which is another symbol for the empty set. So the third case is illustrated by equations like 3 equals 3 or x equals x. Now, these equations are always true. 3 always equals 3 and x always equals x. No matter what value of x you put in, it's still going to give you a true statement. These are called identities. And equations, which are identities, have a solution set consisting of all real numbers. And the way that we write all real numbers is we have a symbol, which is this boldface R, or we could use uh, interval notation, where we would write negative infinity, comma, infinity. All right, so to solve the equations, our basic idea is we're trying to isolate the variable. That is, we'd like to get the variable uh, by itself in an equivalent equation. And we want the variable to have a coefficient of 1 on one side of the equation, and then there should be a number on the other side, ideally. That's what we're looking for. And how can we get to that state? Well, starting from our given equation, we want to get to a simpler equation, equivalent equation. Well, I'm using this phrase, equivalent equation. What does that mean? Equivalent equations have the same solution set. So we're going to do things to the, uh, to the equation which will not change the solution set, but will make the equation simpler. So for example, we could add the same number to both sides of the equation. Or we could subtract the same number from both sides of the equation. Or we could multiply both sides by any non-zero number. You can't multiply both sides by zero. That will not give you an equivalent equation. And then, of course, you can divide both sides by the same non-zero number. And in this case, division by zero is not defined. So it would not be a defined operation to divide by zero. And then I'm going to include this last option as a free view. 
It's a preview of what we'll be needing when we solve nonlinear equations. You can take the reciprocal of both sides and get an equivalent equation. So let's start with some one-step equations, meaning that you only have to do one step to go from the equation that you're given to an equation where you know what the solution set is. So here, I'm trying to get the m by itself. Well, there's a 5 over here with the m, and it's connected via subtraction. So I'm going to remember that if I have a negative 5 and a positive 5, they're going to add to make 0. So I'm going to go ahead and add 5, and I have to do the same thing to each side, and that gives me the solution m equals negative 3. My next example, I, again, I want to get the variable y by itself. There's a negative 2 with the y, but this time it's connected to the y via multiplication. So how do I undo multiplication? Using division. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2, giving me the solution y equals negative 6. In our third example, I have the variable u being divided by 5 to get 11. Well, how do I undo division? I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. Now, over here, I have a form of 1. 5 over 5 is a form of 1. And on the other side, then, and 1 times u is u. So I get u equals 55. Now, we use this idea of balancing. That's where we're adding this or subtracting the same thing from each side. And uh, the only thing that we're doing in these examples, which is different, is that after we balance, so we get the term that has the variable by itself, we'll have to do a division. So I'm going to first start by subtracting 5 from each side. And then in order to get p by itself, p is connected to the 2 by multiplication. So I'll undo the multiplication by dividing both sides by 2, giving me the solution p equals negative 1 half. Okay, in this example, again, I still have a 5, which is connected to the m. There's a 5 minus m equals 14. And if we're not careful, you might think that there's no division necessary here. But I want to emphasize that this minus sign goes with the m. I should really think of this as a positive 5 and a negative m. So when I subtract 5 from both sides, I'm left with negative m on the right-hand side. I'm sorry, the left-hand side. And so now how do I get to m? Well, there's a number of ways you can do it. But one way is to think of negative m as negative 1 times n, in which case then we would divide both sides by negative 1 and you would get m equals negative 9. You could just think of this as saying, well, the opposite of m is 9, so m must be negative 9. In the next example, I have a negative 3h and a negative 3 equaling negative 8. So the opposite of negative 3 would be positive 3. So let me add 3 both sides, and then I'll just have to divide both sides by negative 3. And then I'm going to go ahead and remember that a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So I'll write the solution as h equals 5 thirds. 
Now sometimes I'm going to have variables on both sides of the equation and constants on both sides of the equations. So I like to say let's do the balancing of the variables first. And part of that reason is that ideally you always prefer to have a positive coefficient on your variable. It just minimizes the opportunity for mistakes. So in our example 7, we're going to start by subtracting m from each side. Now, I'm remember, the minus sign goes with the 2. So I'm left with negative 2 on the right-hand side. And now I'll add 5 to each side. And that gives me 2m equals 3. The last step will be to divide both sides by 2. So m equals 3 halves. Now, I don't always have to wind up with my variable on the left-hand side. It just has to be by itself on one side of the equation. And in this example 8, this is the case where it's going to be advantageous to have the variable on the right side. And the reason is that if I subtract 5y from each side, I'll wind up with 2y minus 5y. I'll wind up with negative 3y. And I want to avoid that situation. I want to avoid having a negative coefficient on the variable. So I'll subtract 2y from each side and I'll just keep the y on the right-hand side. So now I want to get the constants on the left-hand side. So the 3y has a plus 2, so uh, the opposite of plus 2 would be minus 2. So I'll go ahead and subtract 2 from each side. Now I have 3y equals 8. My last step will be to divide both sides by 3. Now here's another situation where I would like to keep the variables on the right-hand side. And a big part of the reason is because I have a negative 9c on the left. So if I were to subtract 3c from each side, I would wind up again with a negative coefficient on the c. So instead of subtracting 3c, I'm going to add 9c to each side. So that leaves me with 4 on the left-hand side, and now I have 12c minus 11. So let me go ahead and add 11 to each side. So 12c equals 15. Divide by 12. Now I get 15 over 12, and whenever I write down an answer, which is a common fraction, I would like to write it in simplest form. Form. So I can actually factor those as 3 times 5 and 3 times 4. The 3 over 3 is a form of 1. And so uh, that divides out, and I'm left with 5 fourths. Now, here we can have some multi-step equations. That is, Steps where we have to remove parentheses and collect like terms before we even start balancing. So what I like to do is to say, well, if we see that we have parentheses to remove or like terms on the same side of the equation, we are going to temporarily forget that we are solving equations and focus on just one side of the equation at a time until we have collected all the like terms, removed all the parentheses. So for example, in this equation, I'm going to ignore or cover up or temporarily ignore the equals 2m plus 4. So I've kind of graded out here. If I were doing this on the board, I may cover it with my arm and just say, let's remove the parentheses. 
And when I'm removing the parentheses, remember that this, I think of this as negative 5 times m. That gives me negative 5m. Negative 5 times negative 3 gives me positive 15. So I've removed the parentheses. I'm forgetting about this being an equation for right now. Now there are some like terms, so let's go ahead and collect the like terms. So I'm done with simplifying the left-hand side. Now let me shift my focus to the right-hand side. The left-hand side now is going to get grayed out because I'm only going to have the focus on the right-hand side. And on the right-hand side, all I need to do is distribute the 2 across the m plus 4, and that gives me 2m plus 8. Now I'm done simplifying. Now I think about this as an equation and start my balancing. So I want to get the m's on one side. Uh, so I am going to subtract m from each side. And then I want to get the constants on the left-hand side. So the m has a plus 8 with it. So I'll subtract 8 from each side, giving me the solution m equals 10. Let's look at another example, very similar to the other one. This time I don't have parentheses on the right-hand side, but I do have like terms. But again, I'm going to start on the left-hand side. I'm going to forget about the fact that I have an equation, I'm just going to focus on removing the parentheses and collecting like terms. Now we just, we have the same parentheses and the same like terms, so let's go ahead and we're back to the m plus 18. Now on the right hand side, I'm going to shift my focus. I have 2m and negative m are like terms, so let me go ahead and collect those like terms. And so now I'm left with m plus 18 equals m plus 8. So let's do the balancing. I'm going to subtract m from each side. And after subtracting m from each side, neither side has an m. And I wind up with a statement that is simply not true. 18 equals 8. That is false. That is a contradiction. This these two arrows facing each other is a mathematical symbol indicating contradiction. And when we have a contradiction, then the solution set is empty, or the solution set is the empty set. So one last example, again, with these uh, removing the parentheses and collecting the like terms. Uh, slightly different. But the same idea on the left-hand side, I have parentheses to remove and like terms to collect. So I will momentarily gray out uh, the right-hand side. And I'm going to go ahead and correct that because it's supposed to say 3m, not 2m. So I'm graying it out, but I shouldn't be changing it. All right. Fix that after collecting the like terms. And I'll need to fix both of these. All right, now I'm shifting my focus back to the correct uh, right hand side. Now collect the like terms. I have a 3m and a minus 2m. And so that's going to get me an m plus 8. So I have m plus 8 equals m plus 8. I could probably stop at this point, but maybe I'll just try the balancing anyway. When I subtract m from each side, again, there's no m left, but now I'm left with a true statement. This is always true. Remember, we call that an identity. And if we get to an identity when solving an equation, that means that it does not matter what value of m I put in, I will always get a true statement, which means that the solution set is all real numbers.